I'm Dick Perwitz, and I guess I'm doing the uh, service today. Uh, Kathy is at home with her mother, Ruth. And uh, so. You can see the announcements as they are in uh, the bulletin, on the back of the bulletin, and inside. So, let us start our worship. Please stand as you can. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have no faults and set the tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and for the our enemies which are not satisfied. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send. makes all things new, forgives our sins for Jesus' sake, and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all <clears throat> the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs>
Our reading for Christ the King Sunday, the first reading is Daniel chapter 7. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousands times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, friends. It's Psalm 93 today. Uh, a song of praise and awe, I would say. The psalmist imagines God as the king of creation, majestic. And mighty, so far, kind of a galactic king, so powerful that this king can subdue even the evil chaos of the rising floodwaters. This is called Majestic and Mighty. Your part goes like this Majestic and Mighty, our God is Majestic and Mighty. Let's begin. Majestic and Mighty, our God is.
The second reading is from Revelations chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from who, him who is, who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is coming, the Almighty. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you can. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Now let me give a quick summary. What we have here our sermon comes from Father Michael Winninger, pastor at St. Mary's Catholic Church in Richmond, Virginia. It may seem odd that as Lutherans we are listening to a message from a Catholic priest. However, this message rings true for all of us, no matter what denomination. So let us see the video. Will you marry me? Now, as a Roman Catholic priest who has taken a vow of celibacy, I don't actually get to pop that question. I don't get a chance to ask someone that question, not unless I really want to get into big trouble with my congregation and my bishop. But I do have the wonderful privilege of hearing brides and grooms tell me the story of how their life changes when someone gets down on one knee and asks the question, will you marry me? That is one of those questions that literally changes your life. People have told me about other questions that change their lives as well. Like the time someone asked, would you like to come to our university to study? That changed the life. Or when someone asked, would you like to come and work with us? That changed the life. Or that day when my pastor years ago said to me, Michael, have you ever thought about being a priest? That question changed my life. Or, the woman I know who is now in her 80s, early in her marriage, her husband was unfaithful. And in the terrible, painful aftermath of that infidelity, he asked her a question. He asked, 
Would you be willing to at least try to save our marriage? And through the grace of God and the strength of the marriage vow, she said, yes, I am willing to try. And now, surrounded by her husband of 50 years, her children and her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren, she realizes how that question changed her life and changed it for the better. This weekend, as the flow of the liturgical year draws to a conclusion, and we look forward to the beginning of the Advent season next weekend, Many of our churches celebrate a special focus today. In some of our churches, we call this the Solemnity of Christ the King. Other denominations refer to this weekend as the celebration of the reign of Christ. Whatever we might call this weekend, we all hear a powerful portion of John's Gospel during our worship. And as we read this passage of John's Gospel, Jesus is on trial. The Jewish authorities have already called for his crucifixion, and now Jesus stands before Pilate, the Roman governor. In Roman trials, the usual legal practice was that the governor asked the questions, and the prisoner answered the questions. So at first, everything seems to go according to that legal standard. Jesus stands before Pilate, and Pilate asks him the question, Are you the king of the Jews? But immediately we discover that Pilate is not the only one asking the questions. Jesus questions Pilate. And the question that Jesus asks Pilate could have changed Pilate's life if Pilate had paid attention. Pilate asks Jesus a question. Are you the king of the Jews? It's not clear if Pilate really understands what this question implies. Pilate is a political leader. And it seems that he is viewing Jesus through a purely political lens. Pilate's question implies that he thinks Jesus has come to collect earthly power or influence, just like any other geopolitical player. Later on in this scene, Jesus does answer Pilate's question. Jesus is a king, but he's unlike any king the world has ever seen. His kingdom is not a geographic territory. He has no earthly troops ready to fight a Roman legion. And Jesus is not seeking to take dominion over a certain territory. His kingdom, Jesus' kingdom, is not like any here and now kingdom, but his kingdom is real because his kingdom, his reign, is revealed whenever anyone listens to the truth of God and puts God's truth into action, especially in our relationships with each other. Pilate first asks Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And according to Roman legal practice, Jesus should simply have answered Pilate. But instead, Jesus puts Pilate on trial by asking him a question. Jesus asks, Are you saying this on your own, or have others told you about me? Notice how this unfolds. Pilate first asks, Are you a king? Jesus immediately asks, Are you saying this on your own? Or are you saying this because someone else has told you about me? If Pilate had really paid attention to Jesus' question, I think it could have changed his life. Why do I say that? Because Jesus' question contains a fundamental truth. And I think the truth is this. 
Pilate's life, your life, my life, will not really be changed if our only experience of Jesus comes from what other people tell us about him. Pilate's life, your life, my life, will be totally transformed if we have a personal experience of Jesus' love and his lordship, his reign in our lives. When Pilate asked Jesus, are you a king? His question was based on what other people had told him about Jesus. But Pilate's life could have been changed if he had listened to the truth that Jesus preached or pondered the power of his compassionate miracles or simply paid attention to the way that Jesus treated the least of his brothers and sisters. If Pilate had listened to the good news and personally allowed Jesus' truth to take root in him, he would have realized that Jesus is indeed a king unlike any other. He can and does rule over our hearts, our minds, our spirits, if we let him. He speaks the truth that addresses every human need. He pours out the love which changes lives. But Jesus can only be the king of your life. You can only participate in his reign if you open your heart and personally accept that gift that's offered. Your life won't be changed by simply listening to someone else talk about Jesus, but your life will be changed by creating enough space for Jesus to speak to you. That's how the reign of Christ is unleashed in our hearts. Now, yes, it is interesting to listen to someone else talk about their experience of how uh, their, their spouse asked, will you marry me? It's interesting to hear those stories about how couples got engaged. But your life is actually changed when someone gets on a knee and asks you that question. Similarly, it's interesting and instructive to hear someone else talk about how Jesus is Lord of their life. After all, that's what preachers do. You can even come to church and hear others talk about Jesus and then say together, Jesus is Lord. But your life is actually changed when Jesus looks at you and asks, now are you saying that on your own? Or has someone else told you about me? Maybe another way to think about it is this. Are you ready to let Jesus' questions change your life? 2,000 years of Christian experience demonstrates that Jesus will ask us lots of questions, every one of which can change your life if you listen. For instance, if you listen, Jesus might say to you, well, it's nice that you wear a cross or a crucifix around your neck, but do you really have my spirit in your heart? Jesus might say, well, it's good that you know that you're a sinner, but are you ready to actually confess your sin and then do something to stop it with the help of God's grace? Jesus might say, well, it's good that you're a member of a church. Still, are you simply an observer, an observer of the faith? Or are you a believer and a doer? See, I think that when I stand before the throne of Christ, I don't imagine that he will ask me, Michael, how many scripture passages have you memorized? But I suspect that he will ask me, how much of the scripture did you obey? I'm not sure that Christ will ask me, how often did you receive or participate in the Lord's Supper? I suspect he will ask me, how did your sharing in the bread of life make you more Christ-like? I don't think that Christ will ask me, 
How often did you hear a sermon or preach a sermon about forgiveness? But I do think he will ask me, how often did you actually forgive? I don't think Jesus will ask, how many promises did you make? He will ask me, how did you keep the promises you made? I don't think Christ will ask me, how much earthly wealth did you amass? But he will ask me, how did you give away what the Lord God gave to you? Jesus may ask us, how often did you not just pray for justice in the world, how did you actually work to make the world more just? Jesus won't ask, how many things were you able to cram into a day? But I think he will ask, how did you put your spouse first, your children first? How did you put people first? To be clear, we are not on trial today. But we are worshiping. We're worshiping Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the beginning and the end the one who knit us together in our mother's womb, the one who will welcome us when we pass through the doorway of death. That Savior, Jesus Christ, loves you so much that he is asking you a life-changing question today. Do you, do you want Jesus to really, truly lead you guide you, teach you, change you? Do you? He's popped the question. Please say, I do.
continue with the prayers of the people. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry your forgiveness and love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to liberate all of creation. We pray for all living things, longing for the freedom to flourish, from ancient trees and wild grasses to endangered animals and rare insects. Give human beings compassionate hearts, compassionate hearts to care for them. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son Jesus to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path toward the future. Give them the humility and wisdom to make just decisions to benefit all. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son Jesus to make us into your own people, set free to serve you. We pray for people who serve the well being of others especially ministries in our community. Renew them in their work. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to rule in all times and places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person, and for all who are sick and suffering, especially <clears throat> Artist Enderly, Mike Poilene, Emily Bonert, Aubrey Ellerman, Jimmy Hoyling, the Dillon family, Mike King's father, Kathy Moros, Ruth Moros, all military service members and first responders and healthcare workers who are weary from the persistent pandemic. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, you sent your Son Jesus to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks for those whose lives give, have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join their witness. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. God, the earth is yours and everything in it, yet you have chosen to dwell among the creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine, and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our praise and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. 
Lord, we pray that you will remember us in your kingdom as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I would invite you to take the bread. The body of Christ given for you, take and eat. blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood, may he strengthen and preserve you unto everlasting life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you see. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts. Until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. Amen.
beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life. Bless and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. <laughs>